What's up guys? Welcome back to Surveying with Robert. So today I thought I'd show you how to connect up to the uh, Mississippi, the free network, right? The GCGC network is what I call it, or Mississippi Single Base. So I'm going to show you how to uh, go on and get your username and password. And then I'm going to show you guys how to uh, actually set up the survey style and connect it up in terminal access. So first things first. So, okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to Google GCGC Network. So we're going to go GCGC Network on Google. And you can see we have GCGC Real-Time Network. So we're going to go to there. Now, one of the first things we want to look at is the sensor map. So under the sensor map, that's going to show you where all the reference stations are at. But keep in mind with these reference stations, this is a single base solution which means six kilometers, you start picking up vertical error, right? So that's where um, basically the atmospheric conditions between your base and your rover start changing. That is, um, that's kind of like a, um, what would you call it, a typical scenario, six kilometers. Now, it really kind of depends on atmospheric condition between the base and the rover is what kind of parts man you're going to get. But as a general rule, I try to stay about 20 miles if I'm doing anything vertical. Any more than 20 miles, you're really taking a big chance on having issues, okay, between your base and your rover. So horizontally, you might be able to stretch it out further, but I'd be I'd be a little worried. That's probably about as far vertical as I'd want to take it. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to connect up to this thing, and then we're going to run outside, and I'm going to show you how to connect up on the data collector. So um, when you're in here in the website, you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, there's a register. So let's go into register and look. So what you want to do is if I populate this thing with all my information in it, that's really about all the information I need to put in here. You're gonna see it says um, phone number of business, phone number of mobile, GSM, don't language, I mean, it's all defaulted to English, right? So don't worry about it. So let's go to next. So your organization is gonna be like, you know, let's say surveying with Robert, right? Username is gonna be whatever you choose. And then you're gonna have your password, you're gonna confirm your password, and the email address, you're allowed in one connection per email address. So if you've got five people in your company that you want to connect this network, you're going to need five separate email addresses, one for each person. So once you do that, you do the security code, you enter it in, you're going to end up getting an email from uh, the guys at the GCGC network, and they're going to tell you what your login and your username and your password, they're going to send you all that information. So... Um, how we're going to log in, if you look up here at the top of the screen, it says rtn.usm.edu. That is your IP address we're going to connect to out in the field, and it's going to be on port 2101. Like I said, now all this information will come in the email that they send you, but this is how we're going to connect up. So um, that's how you get your connection. So let's go back to the sensor map real quick, and I'll show you something. So you have each one of these uh, reference stations. Now, a really kind of um, uh, cool thing that you can also get, if I do a login, and let's see if it remembered it. So if you look, there's a reference data shop right here. So one of the things I'm going to show you guys how to do in the near future is how to go on here to this data shop and actually pull off static information so you can process against these reference stations. If you're doing a uh, post-process kinematic or you just uh, maybe for some reason you want to process your own data in business center or something and you want to pull that Rhinex file so you can do that. I'm going to show you guys how to do that in a future video. So right now, what we are going to do is we're going to take my login information. We're going to go out in the field. We're going to connect up and I'm going to show you guys how to, um, how to do this. Okay. So let's head outside. What do you say? Okay, guys, so uh, in theory, by now, you would have gotten your email back from um, the GCGC network, and uh, you would have your username, your password, and all that information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up a survey style, and I'm going to show you how to set this survey style up so that uh, when you do get your information, you know how to connect up the network, okay? 
So first thing we want to do, grid job, of course, right? So uh, let's go in to settings. Let's go to survey style. So we want to create a new survey style. So I'm going to hit new and I'm going to call it GCGC. -GC. How's that? Whoops. If I could spell GCGC. -GC. There we go. We want it to be a GNSS survey style. I'm going to hit enter and accept. The only thing we need to worry about is the rover options and the rover data link. So let's go into the rover options. We'll hit edit. So the biggest thing here, we're going to have survey type RTK, broadcast format. We're going to use multi, whoops, multi station RTCM. So real time correction method or whatever they call it. But, anyways, that's what you need to use because this network uses an RTCM, not a CMR. So that is probably the biggest phone call I get is guys trying to connect up and they've got the wrong type broadcast format in there. Okay, looking down antenna type, I'm actually using an R12 antenna. So we're gonna go to the bottom of the quick release. Uh, my antenna height, my rod is a two meter rod. Uh, I'm gonna hit enter and it'll change it to 6.562 survey feet. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all my satellites on. It may not use them all, but we'll have them anyways. So we have our X-Fill, which I did a video on that, probably one of my first videos I did. Uh, not a Holly watched video, but one of the first videos. And that, um, what X-Fill does is it actually, um, when you lose radio, X-Fill kicks in. So there's like geosynchronous satellite, there's um, base stations around, does some modeling, this, that, and other. Basically what happens with X-Fill is it keeps you survey grade for five minutes. Now this is, only if you lose radio link. So if you lose cell phone or you lose uh, radio or something like that, that X fill will keep you going up to five minutes. During that time, it degrades, right? So um, as you guys know, I'm not real big on the tilt functions. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to hit accept. So there's our rover options. Now let's go into our rover data link. So what we're going to want to do here is build a GNSS contact. Now you can go through uh, settings and, and connections and GNSS contact, or you can just go straight through the survey style like I'm doing now. So I'm gonna change from radio to internet connection. Now then, if you look, you've got GNSS contact with a question mark, you have a little arrow out there to the right, and then out there further right, it says prompt for GN, GNSS contact. What that prompt for GNSS contact is, is if, let's say you've got five guys in your office and each one of them has their own connection to the network. So, Rather than have five different survey styles, you can use that prompt for GNSS contact. So when they log on to the GCGC, the survey style that you've got set up, what's gonna happen is it's gonna prompt them which contact they wanna use. So if you've got Joe, Frank, Tom, Sam, whatever, you can pick their uh, contact in there, their GNSS contact, and it'll use their username and password and their information. So you only have to have one survey style, but you can have multiple GNSS contacts, right? So right now, let's just hit the arrow to the right out there and let's create a new one. And we're gonna call it GCGC, okay? And we wanna route this through controller, which is the first option, it's already defaulted. Network connection. Now, if you're using a TSC3, um, it may be that uh, you've got an AT&T SIM card in it and you've got a connection called AT&T or you've used the automatic internet and you have uh, a setup called internal modem or something like that. When you hit that little arrow, it's going to, on a TSC3, it's going to prompt you that. For the TSC7, which is what I'm using, it says Wi-Fi sailor. So it means it's just going to use the operating system and I've got a SIM card in here, so we're going to use it. So we're going to use the 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 operating system um, internet connection. So I'm gonna say accept. So as we look, in trip configuration, use RTX internet. That's another video, we'll get into that later. Uh, use in trip, yes. Uh, you'll see it says use in trip 1.0. Don't check that, you're not using it. Use proxy server, leave it defaulted to no. Connect directly to mount point. I like using this because it actually saves me a button after I connect up it will automatically populate. So if I click right now, if I just say, okay, I'm gonna use connect directly to mount point and I say yes, then whenever I connect up to my, my mount point, it's gonna automatically populate in here and it's gonna update the survey style and I don't have to worry about it. I'll show you how that, guy, how that works. So username is all lowercase. 
and password. So IP address, remember what I told you a minute ago on the computer, it is RTN for real time network dot um, USM, had to think about that for a second, for the college and uh, EDU, kind of like saying dot com, right? And our port is 2101. Okay, where it says uh, send user identity info, don't click on that. You don't need it. What that's, there are some networks that require it, but the way this works, it's an in-trip network. So your username and password goes first, right? So that's where we've got it set up right now. So do not check send user identity info. Enter, store, and I'm going to accept, accept. Don't forget to store at this page. There we go. So now let's go to measure. Let's find GCGC. Let's say measure points. It should say it's connecting to my row. Oh, I got my rover set at R8S. Huh, that was another video I did. Okay, let's change that real quick. Let's go to settings, connections. Let's go to Bluetooth. And I think this is, whoops. None, that means that one must have been 85. So let's go back, measure, GCGC, measure points. Let's see if it'll connect up. Okay, so just like I said, here's the mount point, right? Uh, single base RTCM uh, 3.1 is actually what it is. So that is the, uh, the connection to the network, except Okay, so now we're connected, RTK initialized, and we should get a check mark here in just a second, depending on how good reception we're getting from the network right now. There it goes. We've got our check mark, our horizontal and vertical is not the best, but it's working. I could be surveying right now. So let's go back and look at our network connection. I'll show you what's happened, right? So if I go in, settings, connections, GNSS contacts, GCGC GC network, I say edit. So first of all, I can't edit it because I'm connected to it, right? But I just wanted to show you right here where it says mount point name, it's, it's actually stored that mount point name. So let me show you what that does for us. Let's get out of here. I'll go back into measure, NGNSS survey, no, I don't power down receiver. Now then you're not gonna see that mount point come up because it's already set to automatically connect up, right? So, here we go, opening connection, bada bing. And there we go, we're connected back up to the network. There it goes. So this network is a GPS and GLONASS only network, which to me is good and bad. The way I like to use this network is I like to, to actually set a point and then set my base up on it and then roll from there. So anyways, guys, um, that is how you connect up to the GC, GC G, it's almost a mouthful in it, GCGC GC network. That's how you connect up to the Mississippi Free Network. It's Remember, it's a single base solution. Be careful how far you are away from a base station. We go stakeout, points, and stakeout. So if we go to options, and I say instead of grid, I say azimuth and distance, uh, except, okay, that's how far we are away from the network. 46,788 feet from our closest reference station. Divide that by 5,280, boom, there you go. I'm not too awful far from um, a base station. So that is what you're looking for. Um, you wanna make sure you're underneath that 20 mile. You know, like I said, six, six kilometers, you start picking up parts of man. I don't like to go more than about 20 miles from the base station if I've got elevations going. So anyways, guys, that's how you do it. That's how you connect up to it. That's how you get the information. I'll get some of the other network stuff together and get that posted for you guys as well so you can see how to connect up to those. So as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and because uh, that's the only way I know if you guys are really digging what I'm doing, right? So as always, God bless. You guys take care of yourselves. Love each and every one of you. And I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Take care.